Hello guys, I've got a classic Tamiya kit for you here today. I've wanted to build a half track for quite a while now and I remember seeing this kit I swear when I was a kid on the model shop shelves. So when I came across it in my stash recently I thought yep this is the next one that I'm going to build. This release of the kit is from 1991 but I believe the original tooling of the half track was from 1972. So that's getting on a bit. This version includes a half track with the flat bed at the rear, the flak gun there and a crew of five. And of course it's in 135th scale. There are a few things that indicate it's a really old kit. One of them is the fact that it has these separate Japanese and English instructions. Although I notice a few newer Tamiya kits do that now as well. The other thing is inside the instructions we have these sort of uh, notes in the margins which often include photos of the kit being built. That's very characteristic of these old school Tamir instructions. You'll also notice there are no numbers on the paint callouts, it's all names instead. So we see German grey there instead of XF63. And again, that's a, a good indication of an older uh, kit from Tamir. So I really do enjoy building these kits from Tamir, and I built a few of them over the years on this channel. I think one of my favourites was the quad gun tractor. And I thought for this one I would try upgrading things a little bit with an Edouard upgrade photo etch set. So Edouard produced this set which includes photo etch for both the half track itself and the flak gun. In fact most of the pieces are for the flak gun. So we have a couple of sheets here. This is the first one. You can see you've got the gun shield there. Much thinner, much more accurate than the um, plastic kit pieces of course. We've also got some photo etch boxes for the uh, magazines for the flat gun. And then on the second piece here, we've got these photo etch grills. These are for the sides of the rear of the half track and they are supplied as that sort of plastic mesh in the original kit. Finally, we have this third threat here, so we get quite a lot. This has things like the instrument panel for the driver's compartment. Things like that replace the kit parts, but it also has some extras like the windscreen wipers and uh, the sort of um, the safety belts that go at the side of the, um, of the driver's position. If you've never used a photo etch upgrade set before from Edouard, this is what the instructions look like. They're generally colour coded, so we'll have red is something which we need to remove from the kit and blue is something that we need to add. So for example here we need to take part A16 which is the steering wheel column. We need to remove the attachment point for that which is plastic and then we're going to replace that with two uh, photo etch components. And if I just pause the video there for a moment, you can see some of the adjustments there that need to be made. I would also note at this point that I don't always use every single photo etch piece that's out there. And I'll try to point out in the video when there's some pieces that I, I just gave up on because they were too small and too fiddly. So starting with the build and the instructions start us off with the wheels here. These look big and a little bit clunky, especially those teeth. And in fact, these would come back to bite me slightly later in the uh, build. You can see the 1972 copyright date there as we build the chassis. In general, everything still goes together as you'd expect from a Tamiya kit. It's just that things maybe aren't quite as uh, finessed as you might expect um, on a newer Tamiya kit. That said, we still do get details on the underside, such as the exhaust. There's an unusual use of both the metal axle and this metal screw here to attach the uh, steering components. Again, that's probably something that we wouldn't see in a more modern Tamiya kit. As we move on to the cab, that's where we start to add the photo etch pieces. 
I'm not quite sure what the instructions indicate here because they indicate to remove the floor of the cab there in red. But if we look at the floor of the cab, there is no molded on um, anti-slip texture to remove. So I just glued the metal pieces straight on top of that. And I think straight away that does enhance the look of the cab there. Along with the photo etch instrument panel, we do get this uh, film with the gauges on that's supposed to go behind it. To be honest, I wasn't particularly impressed by that and I decided not to use that, but just to paint the uh, plastic kit version. You can see that I've also got the photo etch for the um, pedals there. I think with hindsight, I was maybe supposed to chop off the plastic part of the pedal um, to reduce the thickness of the pedal itself. But uh, you know, you live in and you learn. Another photo etch option we have is to remove these plastic handles here next to these vents and replace them with these photo etch versions. I did go for those because they were significantly better than the kit versions. Unusually for Tamiya kit, I did have issues fitting this whole sort of cab and bonnet assembly. I kept finding myself with gaps so if I push the rear of the cab down and into position, then I tended to find out I got a gap at the front where the, uh, the bonnet joins it. It just didn't quite seem to line up very well. It certainly didn't snap into place. I think part of the problem was this bonnet piece here goes in, but the holes to accept its, uh, its lugs are very big and so it can slide around within those, which isn't particularly helpful. And as you can see there, there are clearly a few gaps that need filling with putty. Moving to the rear of the half track and that metal mesh went down very nicely onto its frame. For the photo etch tool clamps, sometimes I used them, sometimes I didn't, depending how fiddly they were. And equally this entire windshield windscreen piece is replaced with some photo etch but of course that does mean we need to be careful because the photo etch needs painting before we sandwich the glass in the middle and of course we need to be careful in terms of the glue that we use and uh, the amount we use so we don't smear it all over the glass. So here's our built half track with uh, putty marks all over it and the photo etch all over as well. I think this looks reasonably good. I left many of these pieces as sub-assemblies for easier painting, as you can see. And then I moved on to the flak gun, which has the lion's share of the photo etch parts. The best approach I found here is to go through the original instructions and cross out any parts where the photo etch is used or highlight any changes that need to be made. So we can see here, for example, um, on these Edward instructions that these parts here completely replace F13 and F14 from the kit. So with that in mind, I went back to the original instructions and just circled those pieces so I would know not to use them either at all or in their, uh, in their original form. Surprisingly, perhaps, there wasn't any photo etch to replace the wooden foot panels here at the bottom. This photo etch gun shield piece has, of course, to be bent. You can see the small nicks in the side there, indicating where that should be done. You can get photo etch bending tools. I simply used a steel ruler, aligned the edges in the right place and just bent it over. I use the original piece as a guide for the angle. Then we have these inner um, support pieces, strengthening pieces, also photo etch. A great opportunity to get super glue everywhere here, but I did my best.
There were no metal barrels for the um, cannons. However, I did drill out the barrels with a small drill. I particularly like the small photo edge pedals there to control the gun. I feel like that adds a good level of detail. We do get these metal boxes to replace the kit ammunition boxes. They had to be bent into place. I'm not convinced my photo etch bending and gluing skills are sufficient at the moment to make these turn out better than the originals. Here you can see everything coming together. It's an extremely delicate piece and it's a fiddly process, but I did get there in the end. I think it's worth it. It does look a lot better than I think the uh, the old plastic version would look. Once everything was built, I gave it a coat of Tamiya primer. That's really important when we've got mixed media like photo etch. Then I used AK Real Colors German Grey. This is a very different grey to the XF63 Tamiya German Grey. It's got a very different uh, look and tone to it. It's much darker to start with. The canvas seats received a coat of XF49 khaki. Then it was time to do some detail painting using some Vallejo acrylics. These retaining straps here across the doorways are a good example of the extra detail added by the Edward set. Decals wise there are a few. And another indication here of an older Tamiya kit is we get those helmet badges and also the uh, SS runes and the swastika which we probably wouldn't get in modern kits. A simple dark black brown oil pin wash was used all over the back of the vehicle, around the rivets and bolts and the various sort of panel lines and details and so on. Once I was fairly happy with the detail painting of everything, I gave the whole kit a coat of hairspray and then a coat of a thinned down XF2 white for some snow camouflage. Then by using a brush and some tap water, we can soak through that white paint to dissolve the hairspray. And that should give us a chipping effect. Sometimes it takes a while to stimulate that effect, so I use a toothpick to scratch the paint and get the water through. I wanted this area at the back to be a fairly high wear area because of course that's where the crew would be. And equally I thought the bonnet or the hood should be another fairly high wear area as weather would probably uh, damage that uh, temporary uh, winter whitewash. You can see here the transition from the white to the grey is quite harsh at the moment. However the idea would be that once I'd done that I would add another coat of hairspray, another coat of white and chip that back too so it would hopefully uh, 
give some uh, gradient to that chipping. I tried to do the same chipping on the gun shield, though of course that's a lot more difficult because it's such a delicate part. To be honest, that winter whitewash didn't quite come out the way I wanted. However, I did think I could still enhance it with some oil paints. So this time I took some unthinned oil paint, used it to represent some grease and some dirt around the mounting for the flak gun, blending it in at the edges with a dry brush, Then using a thinned down version as a pin wash on top of the white camouflage. We do get the standard Tamiya rubber tracks of this kit. I don't mind the more modern ones, but these older ones are not very, very nice at all. They're not particularly well detailed. So I did buy a set of metal tracks to um, replace them. These are from our model. They look really nice. Separate individual pieces. They're already drilled out. We can put them together and put the pins through and the pins are supplied. I did a couple of test pieces and I was able to get them working quite quickly. You can see they're quite nicely detailed there including those holes. And then I noticed something. They're quite a lot thinner than the kit tracks. And in fact, if we look at the base of the wheels there, we can see the kit tracks cover the entire width of those dual wheels. If we put the metal tracks on, Apologies for the lack of focus, we can see that they don't. And Tamiya have let me down here, I've let myself down as well, I didn't uh, do my research. It turns out that this is one of the big inaccuracies of this kit. The tracks are just too wide. And so of course my metal tracks, which are accurate, don't fit. So it was back onto the shelf for those metal tracks. I'll have to find myself another uh, half track at some point to build, although the only ones out there seem to be the really expensive dragon kits. And it was on to making those rubber tracks look as uh, palatable as possible. So in an attempt to do that, I painted them black. I used some rust deposits, applied directly in a few areas, and then splattered over both sides of the tracks even though there's no detail on the insides, just to try to make them look slightly better than they were. And in fact, what I decided to do in the end was simply to use a large amount of mud to, uh, to cover those. We do also get a crew with this kit, but I decided at the moment not to build them. I do have an idea of where I'm going to use this kit and I'll build the figures then, but for this video, we're going to leave them out. So with that in mind, let's have a look at the model so far.
So there we go guys, that was my progress so far on Tamiya's 135th scale SDKFZ7-1, the half track with the flak gun. You will have noticed of course in the video that uh, there's quite a few bits that are not finished yet. This is a work in progress still, so of course I haven't got the, uh, the windscreen there, the windshield there, or the uh, canvas top there either. You'll also notice the things like gaps in the tracks, those tracks are absolutely evil. You can't stick them with super glue. I don't know what you can do with them. Um, I'm going to, I think, embed them in my terrain when I make a little base for this and um, just cover them over with, uh, I don't know, sculptor mold or plaster mold or something and basically anchor them into the ground and cover the gap with, uh, with some mud. Of course, there are no mud effects or anything yet and even just more general um, weathering on top of the uh, whitewash finish. So lots to do for that one, but I hope you've enjoyed it so far. Before I go, let me say a big thank you to my Patreon supporters and my YouTube members. These guys support the channel every month and I really appreciate that guys, it makes a huge difference to me. And of course, anything that's raised through Patreon and YouTube membership goes back into uh, improving the channel and buying things for the channel. So thank you very much for your support guys. And thank you to all of you for watching, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope to see you in the next video and until then, have fun modelling.